Hi friends and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, hello. My name's George Agenbar and I'm a UK music producer. Today we're going to be talking about objective listening. The reason I wanted to make a video on this is because it's something that I've struggled with in the past and still do sometimes. As creatives, we spend hours and hours working on a project and we become emotionally invested in it. It's no longer just a piece of work that we've got to finish. So how can we be critical of something we love so much? How do we take a step back and look at the bigger picture? Make sure you stay tuned for tips and tricks and hit the subscribe button and notification bell for new videos every Wednesday. And things will never be the same when I hear your name since you kiss me in the rain. From a creative point of view, Listening objectively is the ability to be able to listen to our own music as if it was someone else's. And that's really hard. We begin to love a song that we're working on like it's a family member almost, and accept it for all its flaws. But we need to remember that random members of the public or our consumers aren't going to be invested in our music in the same way, and so the slight flaws aren't going to be as openly received. So, here are my top six pieces of advice for listening objectively. Number one, be fussy. Now this starts in the recording stage. Getting the best possible recording will make our mix sound so much better in the mixing process. And we need a level of objectivity when we're recording. We need to make sure that all the fine details have been paid attention to and thought about. For example, make sure there are no XLR leads crossing power leads. Make sure that your microphone is in the perfect position and make sure that it's been gain staged properly. And then you need to be fussy about the performance. Again, for example, did I like the way that I pronounced that word? Did I slide on and off the note? Did I breathe at the right place at the right time? Did I like the emphasis on that part of the word or phrase? And are my dynamics right? All these small details will vastly improve your performance and therefore your mix. Number two, analyse every little component of the song. By breaking a song down into its smallest elements, we can really begin to hear it properly and listen objectively. And we need to question everything we're hearing. For example, are, is the timing and the pitching perfect in all the instruments? Are the instruments balanced? Does an instrument stick out too much? Or is one instrument hidden away? Are the frequencies balanced? Or is there a gathering in a particular area? Do you like the sound of the effects? Is there enough effect on a certain instrument? Do the instruments need to fade in and out? Asking all the small questions like these and questioning every little change you make and every little change you could possibly make will help you listen objectively and improve your mix. Number three, give yourself time away. Now by this, I don't mean give yourself five minutes where you don't listen to your mix. Although ear breaks are very, very important, please do remember to take them within every hour. I mean, give yourself perhaps a week or two where you don't listen to the song. Taking this time away will dilute the love you have for your song and will freshen your ears. This means that you won't be used to hearing your song and therefore overlooking potential problems. Now I get that not every song have huge open deadlines, some you need to work on quickly. But don't rush your projects, don't sell yourself short. Take your time and make sure that your work is the best it can possibly be. Number four, be fussy, again. Imagine that this was a song that you were hearing on the radio for the first time and ask yourself all the same questions you asked when you were analysing every little element of the song. But then ask yourself, does this sound like a commercial song? Could I believe that this was produced or engineered or written by someone else? And if I had bought this song or purchased this EP, would I be happy or would I be disappointed? If you can't answer all these questions with a degree of certainty, then I would perhaps suggest that your song needs a little bit more work and you need to revisit some parts of it. 
Number five, compare your songs with others. Comparing our mixes with other pieces of work and songs that we really like and think are good is one of the most important and useful things we can do. And so listen to another piece of music and ask yourself, why do I like this music? Is it a certain lyric? Is it a certain instrument or bass line? Is it a certain texture? And then revisit your song and say, well, actually, does my song have similarities to this? Do I like those same elements in my song that I liked in the other song? Being able to pick out which parts you like and which parts you don't like is crucial to objective listening. Number six, get someone else to listen to it. No matter how detached we think we are from our work or how good we are at objective listening, there is always going to be a tiny attachment that we have to our song. And we can't help it, it's just the way we are. And so getting someone else to listen to our music is absolutely vital. So send your mixes to another producer or another engineer or someone who knows what they're doing. And they can give you technical feedback, such as are the frequencies balanced? Do the instrument levels sound good? Do the vocals sound right? Then you'll know if you're hitting the mark from a production and engineering aspect. And then it's really important to get a more generalised opinion, perhaps from someone who is slightly less informed about music production and engineering. Someone like a friend or your mum or your dad or a sibling. But you need to make sure that these people aren't going to try and protect your feelings. You need to make sure that they're going to be 100% honest with you. And then it's really important to make sure that we don't just push their opinions aside because we think they're less informed or we don't misinterpret their opinions so that their views align with our views. This won't help in the long run. At the end of the day, they might know slightly less about the technicalities of music, but they are going to be the type of people consuming our music. And so making sure that they're liking the song and enjoying it is the key to making sure that our music will be successful. It's always going to be difficult and to some degree uncomfortable to listen to our work critically. But luckily for us, objective listening is a skill. It's something that can be developed and built upon and it will get easier the more you practice it. But we also need to ensure that we don't go the complete other way and become overly critical of our work we we'll just never get anything finished. I hope that these tips and tricks have helped you. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you found it useful and interesting. Make sure you let me know what you think down in the comments below and if there are any other videos you'd like to see in the future. Please remember to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for new videos every Wednesday and I will see you again soon.